Welcome back aliens. My name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about pair programming. Now just to give you a short answer, pair programming simply means two programmers working on the same task at the same time on the same machine with one keyboard. And that's it. But the question is, are there any advantages and drawbacks of this and why do we need pair programming? To understand this, if you look at the commercial software development, now basically uh, it all started somewhere in 1990s where they started making commercial softwares. Before that as well, we were building softwares, but for different purpose, right? The mass production of softwares started at that time. And we wanted some best practice. Now, of course, right, when you talk about any industries, they have uh, their own best practices to follow. If you talk about the other industries like manufacturing industry or supply chain, it's there from a long time. Software industry wanted those practices from somewhere. So they copied this from manufacturing industry. So let's say if you want to build a project, you will follow a very famous model, which is a waterfall. So basically for every project, you have to take the requirement, you have to analyze the requirements, you have to design the product, then you have to implement the product, which is coding basically, uh, then you have to test it and then you install it somewhere or deploy it somewhere. And then after some time, it will go for maintenance. But the problem is, Every software it can be simple or complex. It will take some time, right? Maybe six months, one year, two years, three years, 10 years. Yes, there are some softwares which even took uh, more than that. <laughs> but the thing is, whenever you build a project, your client is waiting for the project, right? Of course, after the requirements, you are working very hard to go through all these phases. Now, the problem is, in fact, there are multiple problems. The first one is client is very impatient. They want to see the product, what you're building, because you're not building something physically. So a client can inspect example if you are constructing a tower client can see it right what is happening what about the software and then what if you misinterpreted the requirements client wanted something else and you are giving something else and that's where in year somewhere in year 2000 we got a new methodology to build projects uh, so not everyone is following it but it's a great one which is agile uh, so agile there's a separate video on this you can find that description or in the i button but what's important is in Agile, we used different uh, way of building project. Basically, it simply means instead of delivering the project after the entire build, what if you can deliver something in every two weeks? The advantage would be you're giving something shippable to the client and you are getting the feedback instantly. That's very important, right? So you'll be having a small team. Everyone will know everything. And that's where they also implemented some new concepts. Now, this is not new exactly. It was there from a long time, but they have given a new name to it, which is pair programming. Now, why do we need pair programming? So basically pair programming is an agile software development uh, technique where you have two programmers working on the same task at the same time on the same machine. Now the question is why you need two programmers on the same task at the same time on the same machine? Don't you think we are wasting resource when you can have two programmers with two different tasks? which is much more efficient, right? But the thing is, if you look at the way software development is happening and the way it is getting used, everyone is dependent on the software. It can be for gaming, which is happening on the mass scale nowadays. Uh, it can be for video conferencing. It can be to watch videos online. It can be for banking. It can be for healthcare. It can be for aeroplane. For everything, we need software. And of course, that software has to be quality product. Of course, you don't want bugs in it. So whenever you build a project, Yes, cost is important, the timeline is important, but what is most important is the quality of the product. Now, if you're focusing on the quality of the product, you want less bugs. And that's where you say, okay, let's go for pair programming where you have one task, but two programmers and one keyboard. So basically you'll be having, of course, both cannot type at the same time, right? That will not work. So basically you'll be having two roles here. One is a driver and second is a navigator. A driver will write a code and navigator will navigate. It's most like helping the driver here to type a code. Now driver who is typing the code mostly is running into syntactical thinking, right? So if, how do you convert something into code? So basically you have a logical process, right? So you convert the requirement into a pseudo code. So you know the flow in your mind and then you put that into syntax. It can be in any language. It can be Java, C, C++, JavaScript or any language which you love. You can convert that pseudo code into a programming language. Now that's what driver does here on the keyboard. Navigator is still thinking in the logical process and observing the driver and can navigate the driver. This is what you can do. This is what we can avoid. And they're working together. Now, of course, when you have two different minds, it will 
be easier to solve a given problem in a quick way. But yes, if they are working separately, they could have achieved more. So more code, more bugs maybe, right? Because if debugging is removing bugs, then coding is adding bugs. So you have to make sure that when you code, you write less bugs. And that's where we have two people working together will make much more sense. Now it's also about thinking aloud. Example, let's say one of the best process of learning something is thinking out loud. So let's say if you're learning something, you can teach someone, you know, okay, so this is what this concept is all about. But then if you are coding, we don't talk syntax, right? What if you can do that? Every line will become important. So when you have someone with you sitting next to you, you will be interacting in a syntactical way. Every line will be important. So when you are focusing on each line, the bugs will go down for sure. So basically you are programming out loud. Now it's not that only driver will be sitting there for maybe eight hours and navigator will simply navigate. You have to switch roles. Remember both are programmers, they can both write code. So if driver is writing a code, maybe after 15, 20 minutes, they can switch the role and the navigator will become a driver now. Uh, so it's more of if A and B, so if A is a driver, B is a navigator. If B is a driver, A is a navigator and they can switch roles and it will be helpful for learning as well. And we all know, right, when you have extra pair of eyes looking at the code, it was easier to find bugs because we don't see mistakes in our own code, right? But we easily find mistakes in someone else's work. It is easier to find bugs in that way because ultimately it's all about writing code which will have less bugs and building a quality product. There's one more thing you can do here for fun or you know sometimes coding can be boring right of course we all enjoy writing code but sometimes you feel how can we finish this thing faster with less bugs and we can do one thing we can play a ping pong okay I'm not saying the physical ping pong here but uh, ping pong in software development. Uh, there's a technique called TDD which is test driven development. So what happens generally is you write a code and then you test a code, right? That's how the approach is. You write a working code, and then to test everything, you write a test case. What if you do reverse? First, you will write a test case. And of course it will fail, right? You know why the test case will fail? We don't have a feature yet. So first you will write a test case, which will fail. Then you build the feature and then the test will pass, right? So two steps. First, write the test case and then build a feature. This is a TDD approach in a simple terms or oversimplification of it. So here we have two programmers, right? So if A, is writing a test case, B has to build a feature. That should be a good game, right? And then they will swap, they will switch the roles and then now B will write a test case and A will write a code. It will be much more fun and we are making sure that we are following TDD, right? It's, it's actually fun. And when you are testing each case, when you are testing each feature, that means you are building a quality product. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of uh, good things about this. You will learn from each other. There will be satisfaction because each line is important for you now. And then at the end, you will achieve something. Hey, that was great. Uh, we had an awesome session of ping pong where we build awesome code, right? Yes, it can be exhausting because you're continuously interacting for hours on the same thing because now you're not just writing code now, you're thinking, you're programming out loud. Okay, there's a question. How will you make a pairing here? Will it be junior, senior? Because see, in every company, in every team, basically, let's say if, you have, if your team size is six or seven, you will be having seniors and fresher in the same team or senior, junior, basically here. Should I make a combination of junior, seniors? or senior senior or junior junior see if you make a combination of senior junior it makes much more sense is because senior knows entire process and junior is new so junior will be learning a lot of different stuff from the senior so when they are sitting together on the same machine of course if senior is typing junior can observe there can be a drawback here because if senior is on the keyboard a senior might be dominating right and it might demotivate the junior on the other hand if junior is typing senior might interfere a lot is because see when you write a code you make a mistake right you miss a semicolon here the navigator has to give some time to the driver to make the correction don't just simply if you're a navigator and if you see a code getting wrong don't just interrupt there by saying hey you are making a mistake here maybe the driver is doing it intentionally or maybe driver knows there's a mistake there he will come back and rectify it the next combination we can go for is senior senior which makes much more sense is because both are experts but then there might be ego issues and that's important right you have to teach you have to learn how to how to interact how to communicate how to share the ideas properly and the last one is junior junior which is a bit tricky because both are new not recommended 
So best combination from my side would be senior and junior or senior senior if you have that privilege. But the question is, if you look at the current situation in the COVID, of course, you cannot have someone next to you because all your counterparts or colleagues are sitting somewhere else. If you are in India, your counterpart may be in US or some other place. Now, how will you make that pair programming? That's where we have a remote pair programming. Now, in remote pair programming, what we do is same thing is happening. You both are using the same system. Of course, you can't use same system, right? But there's a way you can give control. There are some softwares which will allow you to take the control of the other machine, right? And basically you can share the control here. And of course you have some video conferencing apps using which you can interact. So even that works, right? So basically nowadays everyone is doing remotely. There might be some issues, network issues, which we all blame. There are issues of the available gadgets. If you don't have a proper webcam, if you don't have a proper mic, it will be a bit distracting and you may not enjoy it. But then there are ways you can actually improve the quality of your video and audio with the things which you have. It will just take some time to, you know, uh, find the way around. So that's the uh, remote pair programming. There are a lot of drawbacks of this one for pair programming. The first one is time consuming, right? You have two programmers working on the same time. So basically you are increasing the person hours here, right? The next issue is uh, different issues can be it can be exhausting because you are not just typing code you are interacting so it will be exhausting uh, then there might be different skill set so as a junior if they are typing a code senior might feel they are wasting their time in it so that's where you need to properly communicate and not for every project you need pair programming so depends where to use it and where not to use it okay uh, now apart from pair programming there are uh, other type of programming as well which is called mob programming i know that sounds weird or if you don't want only two you want multiple people multiple programmers working together and that's why we have more programming of course only one programmer will type the code the other will be navigators and when you have multiple brains solving the same issue it will be faster normally we do this when you get stuck somewhere you want solution you are there from last five to six hours or maybe days and now you want to find solution let's do more programming and let's solve this so yeah that's it from this video i hope you enjoyed we talked about pair programming. If you enjoyed, let me in the comment section and do subscribe for the videos. Bye.